Okay. Um, I am the director of children's ministries here at Bethel Church, which is a, uh, yeah. Yes, it is the best ministry. But basically, um, I have the the tremendous privilege of looking at a generation that I believe is unlike any generation that earth has ever known and being a guardian and an equipper of not only the young but those people who lead the young. Well, we have amazing children that are doing things that are absolutely astonishing. We have uh, just finished a leader's advance. We have this great thing uh, that we do as a the prophetic teams will prophesy over every single person that comes to these advances. And we had 44 kids prophesying over a two-day period of time. And, uh, you know, we had two days of teams, and the 9- and 10-year-olds were on the first day. And they, they join the second-year school of ministry students, and they begin to prophesy. Now, at first, the students who have not worked with children prophesying think, is that cute? And then they hear them prophesy, and they fall off their chairs. Um, <laughs> we had the 9- and 10-year-olds the first day. There were two kids sick the second day, and when we went in to find a substitute, the whole fifth-grade class volunteered to come in. Now, saying that, they had just been spending three and a half hours prophesying over perfect strangers with one 15-minute break. And they couldn't wait to get back and do it again. But one of the testimonies that we got was when one of these little nine-year-old girls was in one of the booths, there was a pastor who came that was from a traditional charismatic church and said, you know, we believe in prophecy, but we really don't do this, so I'm a little nervous about what's about to happen. And as he was sharing with Nancy Cobb afterwards, he said, I have three life verses. God's just given me three life verses. And when I sat down in the chair, the nine-year-old girl took the tape recorder and recited every single verse. It didn't take a lot to convince him afterwards that God was capable of speaking through the prophetic. But this is the type of thing that would be happening over and over and over again. We've got these kids that hear his voice clearly. When we teach children how to prophesy, it isn't a game to us. Imagine being a generation of children who clearly learn how to hear his voice from the time they're eight years old. Who are they when they're 20? What kind of leader in the church are they when they're 30? There's a confidence that comes to them that's amazing and it's incredible to watch. And see, I teach adults the prophetic and I teach children the prophetic. The difference between those two is that the adults will go through this battle. Is that me? Is that, is, did I already know? Is that God? Is that my enemy? Or is that, and they'll go through this war. You tell children God wants to talk to them and they go, cool. Well, I saw blue. And, and, they, and it's a very easy process for them. There isn't a battle in them unless you become as a little child. You can't enter the kingdom. You see, the kingdom of God is at hand. It's now. What he's asking us to do is to put away being so sophisticated that we forget that it's, the gospel is very, very simple. We had this tongues and interpretation session, and B. Kuhn is going to be the teacher. She's my children's pastor at Twin View. And she asks these kids, 100, about 125 kids, how many of you already have your prayer language? 70 of them stood up. And I'm thinking, okay, God is sending us geniuses now. Why did you come to my conference? You know, because normally we're, you know, we're introducing children to things. So we had these 70 kids form two sides of a fire tunnel, and they just spoke in tongues, in their own little tongues. And then we had all the other kids who wanted their prayer language to walk through the fire tunnel as many times as they wanted to until they began to speak in tongues. We had 35 kids within a half an hour that received their prayer languages. We had parents calling us going, my child got their prayer language. They've been praying forever for this. Wake said they walked through the tunnel. Mine said he got his prayer language during worship last night before we even prayed and taught them. But one of the things that happened while well, these kids, and the presence of God was so unique, when children are in charge, there, there isn't an agenda. And, and I know, I don't mean that critically like there is with adults, but it is different when they just simply come and be in his presence. So we have these row, these lines of children praying in the spirit, these new children walking through and they're praying in their prayer language. So I'm on the microphone and I'm singing 
prophetically over this room while it's happening. And this nine-year-old girl comes walking up to me. She reaches up and takes the microphone out of my hand. <clears throat> And I'm thinking, ha, huh, honey. And so, but she takes the microphone and she begins to sing in her prayer language over the room. And it's extraordinary. Now, I'm just going, yeah, I'm taking credit for that. Okay, you know? I, I mean, seriously, you've got, you know, it's my job. Um, so when the whole thing is over and these kids are all over the floor and they're having a great time, I spend a minute with this little girl and I say, so did you already have your prayer language when you came to the conference? And she goes, no. And I said, so when you sang in your prayer language, have you ever sang over a microphone a song using your prayer language before? She goes, no. I said, so okay, you're telling me that the very first thing you took a mic away from me so that you could pray and sing over the room in your prayer language. And the thing is, is that that was a completely normal event for her because she was just doing what she saw us doing. You see, unless you become as a little child, she wasn't, first of all, this room is chaos. I, there's tongues everywhere, bodies everywhere, children everywhere, and she just begins to sing. See, she's not trying to be famous. She's just doing what she was created to do. See, it's her destiny to begin to release the presence of God over rooms full of people. And, and she had a great, great start. That was an amazing... <laughs> I, we, have, we get these testimonies. The little bitty kids are the, are the greatest amazing things to me. We heard this testimony of, of, of friends were visiting each other and they overheard their two, three, and four-year-old little girls playing Raise the Dead. Now, three-year-old, you lay on the ground and you be dead first. Three years old. You be dead first and I'm going to resurrect you. And so you, they, the, the parents are like, <laughs> looking around the door and, they, and the children are just going, okay, I command you to be alive in the name of Jesus. And the dead child gets up and they both celebrate. And now it's, okay, now it's your turn. You lay on the floor. And so they just were taking turns playing Raising the Dead. Now, uh, the other testimony that I heard that was so great that was like that is this one little girl comes in and she's got both of her arms shoved down in her t-shirt. And she comes out to her grandma and she goes, Nana, pray for my arms to grow up. She's three years old, okay? Pray for my arms to grow up. Now, so, of course, your, her nana obeys, and I command this arm, so she wiggles and wiggles, and the arm pops out, and she goes, okay, and they celebrate, now pray for the other one to grow up. Now, <laughs> think about the mindset that exists in a three-year-old child that their games are now full of the supernatural. Pray for my arms to grow out? I'm not sure I would do that. N never mind. I, that was an extraordinary thing. You see, what we're finding is happening in the children is they are being immersed in a culture that gives them permission to be free in who they said they were going to be, or who he said they were going to be. And, oh, I have one more thing to show you that's so cool. Okay, we, we take our kids to heaven. I mean, who doesn't? Okay, our kids go to heaven. <laughs> And, and people that know how to do heaven things take them to heaven. And so we have a middle school that, that was tour guides. Is that what they're called? Okay. They take our, our middle school kids to heaven. So we have this one. They're, they get crazy, you know? And so the kids all came rushing. This little bundle of kids came rushing up to Mr. Mayor and said, Mr. Mayor, we all went to heaven together. And we saw the same thing. And he goes, stop. He said, I want you to go to that corner. You go to that corner. And you go to that corner. And I don't want you to talk to each other about what you saw. Just draw a picture of what you saw. Okay, you are not, I mean, even I, and, and I believe, okay? Um, show the first, can you show the first picture? <laughs> These middle school kids said, we saw, a, we saw a path of rocks and then a stream, and we saw a lamppost that had a jewel right on the top of it. And so when they drew these pictures, they brought this to Mr. Mayor. Now, show, me, show, show us the second one. The children who did not talk to each other said, we saw rocks that were, were leading up and we saw a lamppost with a jewel on the top. Now show them the third picture. Aww. Now I'm sorry, but that's fun. Okay, you want to know if you're really going to heaven. Okay, you know, you don't, don't go. But, but these guys, they think it's really cool. They meet each other. They, they see each other in heaven, 
hang out. I, I mean, the, the neat thing about it is it is real to them because it is real, you guys. They're not learning like little tools and little, little things to do. They are becoming encounterers of God. They are in the kingdom because the kingdom is at hand, and we're just sending out tour guides.